Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for November 2020. Uh, it's been another solid month in the project and lots of interesting work happening. But before we begin, let me tell you about sponsorship. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe someday make it possible for me to do this full time, then there are three donation options. So I'm on Patreon and GitHub sponsors uh, for monthly recurring donations. And I'm also on PayPal if you prefer making a one-time donation. Uh, and this month we actually reached 10,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. And in celebration of that, I opened a small store on Teespring with some Serenity OS themed merchandise, uh, like this Hello Friend um, teacup right here. Uh, and also, we have some buggy stickers, um, and check that out if you're interested. It's uh, linked in the description as well. Uh, and of course, my humble thanks to everybody who's already supported me somehow, uh, and welcome to all the new supporters. I'm truly honored to have you all. Thank you. Um, so let's take a look at November. Um, something that immediately stands out to some people and others might not notice <laughs> is that we now have gamma correct gradients. So the window title bar is the most noticeable um, instance of that. Uh, it used to be sort of a long stretch of the same color in the middle, uh, but now thanks to Sahan, we have gamma correction. So thank you very much for implementing that. Um, so something I did this month was I went and I built a game inside Serenity and it was a, a very simple breakout game. And uh, the game itself is not particularly special, but it was a very interesting exercise to use the system to build a new application for it. And I ran into a lot of issues uh, that I then ended up spending time fixing. And um, some of the most notable uh, fixes that came out of this were a bunch of kernel fixes. So there has been a whole bunch of work on stability of the file system implementation. For example, we had various um, bugs in the ext2fs implementation, and um, we had some other interesting issues like if you ever executed a file, that file would then be leaked and could never be deleted from disk. Um, so those types of things have been fixed up as a result of just um, like taking the time to actually build a complete game inside the system and seeing what happens, like what kind of things we run into. So that was that was a really good exercise. Um, and uh, another thing that also came out of this was that we learned that compilation is quite slow. And um, I ended up um, sort of re uh, rewriting the disk cache system in the kernel. So it is now significantly faster, which uh, dramatically speeds up both compilation and linking when using Hack Studio. So that's been really good. Um, and there's also been a whole bunch of other work on the kernel by um, Tom, who uh, is still working on bringing up multi-core support. So Tom is fixing all kinds of um, concurrency issues, scheduling issues, and, and these kind of things, preparing us for entering into the multi-core world. Uh, and it feels like it's getting closer and closer, but uh, we'll see when we get there. Uh, but a lot of great work by Tom. And also this month in the kernel, uh, Nico added the uh, adj, uh, adj time syscall for um, when you want to adjust the system time progressively. So um, Nico has been, has been doing a bunch of work on our NTP client, uh, NTP query. Um, which you can use to, to set the system time. But, um, um, but, but, but uh, the syscall was just um, uh, edge time. So anyway, um, that's all I can think of in the kernel right now. So um, in the user space world, of course, there's a lot more happening as usual. Uh, so uh, speaking of Nico, he implemented basic floating point support in the user space emulator, which um, allows us to start running GUI apps in the user space emulator. Um, so we can now run programs like the browser 
And of course it loads pretty slowly here. You can see over a second to load the start page, whereas it takes 15 milliseconds if you don't emulate it. But still, um, it's awesome. Now we can actually run our GUI applications in the UE. And um, if you're not familiar with UE, it's basically our version of uh, Valgrind. So it's a complete uh, x86 emulator for user space that um, can detect memory errors, buffer overflows, memory leaks, um, branching on uninitialized data, and things like that. So this is very, very awesome. And I've already found tons of bugs um, by being able to run UE on more things. Uh, in fact, I also spent some time making UE able to run um, the full GCC compiler, which led to the discovery of a lot of silly bugs in our standard C library. So that was also really good. Anyway, um, so since we have the browser up, I guess I can show you that um, Luke has been doing a lot of work on web API and spec compliance stuff this month. So um, the support for, for various web standards is slowly growing in the browser. Uh, it is a slow process for sure, but uh, little by little it improves. So uh, that's really good, really awesome to have Luke um, chipping away at that. Uh, and I've also myself done some work on the layout engine this month. So I've redesigned the CSS layout engine to be um, to operate in terms of formatting context, which is how the uh, CSS specification sort of expresses how layout is performed. And um, the previous design of the engine was um, sort of inheriting a lot of um, WebKit ways of thinking from from the distant past, um, from and um, I find that it's it's better to implement the engine in terms that match what the CSS specification talks about because it also makes it more hackable for other people who are less familiar with existing engines. And instead, you can just look at the spec and um, see how the code maps to the spec. So it's. It's something I'm, I'm very excited about because it means that we can now move forward on a lot of new layout features. But it's not a very visual change that I can show you here. But nevertheless, I wanted to mention that. Um, and something else that's pretty cool is, let me just bring up a new terminal while UE scans for leaks. Um, so this month we have uh, a regular expression engine, finally. Uh, so. This was implemented originally by Emmanuel um, and then picked up by Ali, uh, who finished what Emmanuel had started. And we now have a regexp object in, um, in the libjs engine. So we can match, uh, oh wait, what is it, test? But that won't match, but b.r will totally match. Uh, and this is really awesome because it's one regex engine for JavaScript and the same engine right here with grep. So um, we can grep in at C password, for example. See, we didn't have grep before, now we do. This uh, is something I think is really awesome because uh, we've gone quite long without regex support, but now we have it and it opens up a lot of interesting features. Um, so we'll see what, what we can build with that. And uh, I, guess, I guess I forgot to mention about the user space emulator that I also spent a fair bit of time optimizing it so that it can actually run GUI applications at a satisfactory, satisfactory speed. Um, originally, it took about 30 seconds to load the browser. So we got that down to about one second, which was very positive. Um, anyway, so... Um, the regex engine, of course, helps with grep and, and JavaScript, uh, but there's also been a whole bunch of other work in libjs. Uh, Linus is doing tons of great work just um, covering all kinds of corner cases and adding language features. And um, the libjs engine, and especially the runtime, is slowly growing into a better and better JS engine. And it's, it's really fun to see just how it's kind of taking shape. Uh, and 
One thing in particular that I liked this month is that Linus added stack overflow detection. So we can now detect if you if you nest too deep in the call stack in JavaScript, then we can gracefully uh, throw an exception instead of uh, crashing the engine, which is really good. And then I myself implemented the um, silly with statement, which of course is a part of JavaScript. So we have to support it um, with o console.log foo. And look at that, it prints three. Very strange um, language mechanism bringing a, an arbitrary object into the lexical scope. Anyway, um, a lot of fun stuff with that. So, um, oh, something that's also happened this month is that uh, there's been a huge effort in fuzzing. So um, we are now part of the OSS fuzz project, which is um, a Google run project that just f uh, fuzzes open source software. And uh, David made a huge and awesome effort to integrate Serenity with the OSS fuzz infrastructure. And uh, it is now continuously fuzzing more and more parts of our software. So we've been finding lots of um, corner cases and interesting bugs in our JavaScript engine, our regex engine, um, in our image decoders, in our shell parser, um, all kinds of places. And this is really, really awesome. And thank you very much to David for, uh, for spearheading that effort and to everybody who has been helping out and um, contributing fixes and stuff um, for the fuzzing bugs as they come in. And I have like 10 emails in my inbox right now with new fuzzing bugs. So they're really like rolling in. This is um, absolutely awesome. And it's going to do wonders for our general quality, I think. Um, and what else? So, oh, let me show you pixel paint. So um, a very important feature in any painting application, of course, is to be able to save. And I'm happy to report that we can finally export BMP files. Cool BMP. Um, so this was implemented by Ben. So we can now save our, our beautiful creations here. Um, so Ben wrote both the save mechanism in Pixel Paint and a uh, BMP export um, BMP encoder, I guess. It's our it's our very first bitmap format encoder. So thank you very much, Ben, for implementing that. Uh, and Ben also did uh, an undo feature. So we can now go back in time here, or go forward in time, which is very nice when you are creating cool pictures, of course, to be able to change your mind. So super awesome work by Ben on Pixel Paint. Very exciting. Um, and then let's look at the spreadsheet application. So something that I love this month is that Ali has implemented infinite, uh, an infinite spreadsheet. So when you get near the end of the spreadsheet, if you look at the scroll bar here, it will actually grow the spreadsheet. So you can keep going forever. And the spreadsheet just grows. Uh, it's very, very interesting. And, um, oh, did I make him upset now? Uh, I may have <laughs> gone too far, but um, it's it's awesome. I love that feature. And uh, there's all kinds of other stuff going on with the spreadsheet as well. We have uh, CSV import and export um, and drag and drop of cells, stuff like that. But it's a little bit unstable, so let's not let's not take too close of a look right now um and um it's been ali doing all the work on the spreadsheet so thank you very much ali and ali has also been working on libtls a bit so we have um some more cipher suites uh the aead cipher suites if i recall correctly and um basically the more cipher suites we add the more compatible we come we become with the web because um, 
while we support HTTPS right now in the browser, uh, it's still often the case that you try to go to some web page and um, we don't actually have any Cypher suites in common that we support um, in common with the server. So more Cypher suites is always nice. Um, and then I guess there's been various little things going on in um, in various programs. Like I know that Sound Player now has a loop setting, for example. Uh, I think that was Brendan who did that. And uh, Brendan has also been doing a lot of uh, really interesting security analysis this month and uh, continues to do interesting security analysis. Um, and we have some stuff like uh, like these little things like ls dash capital F for classify so you can get like the slash at the end of directories otherwise you don't um, and other little things like if you copy with dash V it will now print out what it's copying um, these little things that you kind of um, take for granted that they exist because that's what other systems do it's really nice when we we start to do them as well I think um, also, we were missing like find dash name, I think. And now we have it. So uh, thank you. I think uh, thank you to, 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 to Spencer who did the um, verbose thing and Sergey who did dash name and whoever else worked on the various uh, command line utilities. It's, it's really, really awesome. Like I, I love that. We started out with a really small set originally of command line utilities, and uh, we just keep adding functionality to them as we go. And uh, it's so cool to see the system organically grow and take shape like this. Um, and of course, grep is the, the main new program this month, which is really cool. Um, just like that. Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, I, th I think that's, that's kind of all the things I wanted to show, but there is one more thing I wanted to mention, uh, that this month we have made a migration from Travis to, uh, GitHub Actions. So we used to use Travis for our continuous integration stuff. Uh, and now thanks to the hard work of Ben, uh, we have worked to, um, we have moved to GitHub Actions. So. That's been really, really awesome. And the new stuff um, is n free of charge for us, which became an issue with Travis. So I'm very happy to, to be on the new infra structure. And thank you very much to Ben and to everybody else who contributed to getting that stuff up and going. Um, yeah, I, I think that's everything I have today. Uh, so, um, it's, it's it's just so much fun this project like uh, I don't know like we've been doing this for quite a while now and it just makes me so happy to to <laughs> to mess around with the system like this and just see all the new things and I get to show them to you so thank you very much for stopping by and uh, checking out this video and uh, seeing what we've been up to uh, if you ever want to talk you can find us in the Serenity OS channel on the Freenode IRC network. Um, and that's that. So I'll see you next time. Bye.